Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous episode, we learned how to obtain an access token and store it on our, on our client using the auth authentication flow, or most specifically the authorization code grant flow. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can use this access token to access some uh, authorized resources, okay? Or secured resources, if you prefer that. Now, what I want to do in my um, client home controller, I want to go here and I want to use this access token to first of all call something from the server because the server already has the mechanisms for validating the access token before we go about trying to access something from the uh, from an API that we're going to create okay so let's go into controllers and let's create a secure there or maybe rather let's make a secret controller that's yes and let's make a public i or let's first inherit from controller so i get intelligence there we go Ooh, i action result big c and let's say index turn okay and let's say that this is going to be uh or rather, let's make this a string, and we will say that this is some kind of a secret message. Okay, and we're going to authorize this. Okay, so we have a secret controller that has some kind of a secret message, right? And it's authorized. So somebody with a JWT token, as we have set up in our pipeline here, that we have an JWT bearer, but because this actually has access to the security key and can uh, validate the token, it will be able to do this authorization automatically. And uh, now we basically want to make a call to this controller from here. So let's go ahead and create an HTTP client. So in services here, I want to add HTTP client, and what this will allow me to do now is bring up a instance of a IHTP client factory like that HTTP client factory let's create a global client let's create the field okay so we have the field let's go ahead and just ask for a server response we're just going to await on client, get async, and let's see, where is it? Secret controller. I want to go to the secret controller index, so the URL, I can get it from constants. So in constants, let's grab this URL here. Put it here on get async, and then I just want to go to secret controller slash index. If we just call this like this, nothing is going to happen because the token is here and the request is here and we haven't really fused these together. So what we can do is in the client, we can grab the default request headers and we can add the same way that we have added it to the header in Postman. So we'll say authorization and then bearer and let's pass the token here. like this and let's create a second one so response header or not really response header but let's say this is going to be where we are passing the access token in the header and i guess if we're adding it to this client we are gonna end up with i guess we want two clients maybe um, nah never mind actually we already know that the access token and the URL works as well. That's basically what I wanted to showcase. But we already know that works, so there is no real point to showcase it. Okay, so let's go ahead, fire this up, and see if we can actually reach this response with the token that we have provided. Okay, so let's go to home secret. Same as before, Bob. And now we're on the secret page, and this is where we have been redirected. And the response status code is 200. So just to make sure that it, the authorization works, let's go ahead, 
disable the bearer token and let's see the 401 response instead. Again, slash home secret, Bob. And if we hover over now, we will see the 401 not authorized. Cool. So the authorization works if we add the access token. Cool. So in most cases, well, not in most cases, sometimes all you will have is essentially your server. And for simple authentication mechanisms, like you'll have your server with the API there. So you will essentially have one application where you will have the SPA, the authenticator, and the API in the same project. And you will read or you will have the routes for the SPA and you will have the routes for the API and the routes for where you deal out the views. And you will be able to essentially deal out a token to the JavaScript application and authorize it there and have the access to the keys. But sometimes, uh, and I'm not going to dig in too much into this uh, topic because right now there is a lot of a lot of extensions that are already built in for the auth flow. But we are going to create a, an, our own API and we are going to provide our own flow of uh, validating this token, which isn't going to be production ready at all. But it's just to give you an idea of how this can, might or can happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new project. And this is going to be an API. So new ASP.NET Core application API. Create. And we can opt in for empty again. Create. And same as before, I'm just going to add a few things like authorize use authorization and points i want map uh, default controller route i just want the controllers in my services remove these comments and there's one more here cool okay and now let's go ahead and add authorization now, as I said, that this way nobody just uses auth anymore. The secure way is to use the OIDC extension on top of it. But since this tutorial is primarily about auth and going to the spe specification, what it says about accessing protected resources is essentially the resource server must validate the access token and ensure that it has an exp not expired and that its scope uh, covers the requested resource, right? So all this stuff is some kind of functionality mechanism that you must do. And this sort of stuff is the same for anything that implements auth. So usually frameworks will take care of this stuff for you. All right. The methods used by this research server to validate the access token are beyond the scope of this specification. All right. So the specification itself doesn't define how this is used how the, the token is validated between uh, the API and the server, right? But uh, it goes ahead and it goes to say, but generally involved an interaction or coordination between the resource server, which means our API, and the authorization server, which is our server, right? So what it says is basically, there will need to be some communication between the API and the server, but it's up to you how to implement it, right? So uh, right now, I'm going to basically show you how you might want to go about doing uh, Im implementing it or how it might be implemented in these frameworks that you're going to be using in the future. Because to be honest, you don't want to implement this sort of stuff yourself. It increases your margin for error. And uh, in the future tutorials, we're going to be covering identity server where we're going to uh, where you're going to see all this stuff work on its own. It's going to be magical. All right. So. Essentially, what we want to do is the same way that we pass a access token to our server, we want to pass it to our API and target that API, right? So first of all, let's go ahead and add our API to the startup. So we're going to start it up along with our all our other applications. Okay, now let's go ahead and oh, not see a project file, but rather I want to open up the uh, properties of the project. I want to go on debug and I just want to grab the uh, secure URL here. And I will go into my home controller and I'll just set up the call as well. All right. So, okay, server response, and this is going to be an API response. 
copy the URL and I'll literally just use the same, uh, what's it called? The same route, okay? But for a different URL. So all I can do now is essentially copy this controllers folder, put it in my APIs folder, uh, delete the home and auth controllers, and we're just gonna be left with the secret controller, but as well, let's rename the space to api.controllers, right? So all this API has is the secrets controller with the secret message again and the authorized att attribute. And uh, in the startup, I'm not really interested about uh, authentication. Uh, but we can really, we can add it just so uh, use authentication. So it, it can return that uh, 401 response because authorization kind of depends on authentication. So uh, add not authorization, authentication. And there we go. Okay, so for our add authorization, if you remember or if you've watched what I've taught in the basic episodes, we can set up our own requirements. And I'm actually gonna go into the basics here and I'm gonna override the default way of authorizing for my API. Okay, so in the startup here, where I have this commented out, uh, this is where I essentially set up uh, the, or uh, not set up, I override the default policy for authorizing, right? So back in my API startup, I'm just going to close everything else so we don't get confused too much between the files. I'm going to set the config. I'll paste in what I have copied from my basic tutorials. Okay, and I'll go over this briefly. Okay, so authorization policy builder. Uh, this is essentially just a builder for your authorization policy. and it, for this authorization policy uh, builder, we want to specify a requirement that we are going to then uh, use a handler to validate, and that's when we're going to do the communication, right? So, and that's going to be the default because I'm overriding the default, and for all default authorization, I'm going to redirect it to the server. Okay. If you want to know more a little, a little bit more about how this whole uh, uh, policy, all authorization policy works, watch the basics episodes. Uh, watch the, watch the first three episodes or something like that or the first four. Let's go ahead and add requirements and let's go ahead and create our own requirement. So uh, let me collapse all of this. And in my API, I'm gonna create a JWT requirement dot or folder and JWT requirement.cs. Okay, and inherit from I authorization requirement oh I spelled that correctly yep I did uh, I don't need any parameters uh, again if I, I can uh, define my own authorization policy to be able to dynamically pass it in the authorization attribute which I have already explained how to do it and uh, I can then pass the stuff in the header and uh, you will see a little bit more how that can pan out in a second next thing I want to create a public class and I'll create a handler and let's create an authorization handler where we can pass the JWT requirements and let's implement this class okay so let's not throw anything here let's grab the context and the requirement and we'll create a constructor because we will need to communicate with the server because we're gonna have to forward the token because the API doesn't know anything about signing the token it just has the token and it's like all right i mean i have the token uh, okay uh, you validate this and then based on your uh, response i will tell if somebody can go through or not okay so for this we will need to have access to the access token and this context right here is not the http context so it's the authorization handler context so we'll need access to the http context and uh, we will need to make a request to the server. So we will need an HTTP client. So we kind of already know how to add those. Uh, we know how to add the uh, HTTP client. So add HTTP client. And uh, we can add HTTP context accessor. And this is, will allow us to inject the, or rather have access to the HTTP context. 
So for our HTTP client, we create an I or we inject H I HTTP client factory, same as we did before with the home controller. Client factory, let's say create client. Uh, make sure I name this correctly. Cool, and now I want uh, I HTTP context accessor. Okay, HTTP context accessor, and I want my HTTP context. Okay, and let's create this field. All right, so we want to extract the token from here, from the header, right? Or the URL. If but uh, if you want a challenge, you can set that up. I'm not going to be setting that up. I'm just going to be extracting it from the header, right? So if you want to challenge yourself, uh, make this work for the passing the access token and URL for your API as well. Okay. So we have the. HTTP context, this is where we're getting the token, and we have the client. This is what's going to send the token to the server. So what I want in my auth controller, I'll just go ahead and create a, and where do I want to create it? I want to create an endpoint where I'm going to send the token, where I'm going to just basically say, this is what should validate it, but I'm not going to build any mechanisms for validating the token. Of course, I can authorize it as well. So public action result, validate, and return OK. And we can either secure it with an authorized filter. And then token, HTTP context, request, query, um, try get value so okay, let's say if try get value uh, access token at this point you will have to check to either get the value from the header or the access token in this example i'm just going to pass it through the url so this is where i'm grabbing it from the request otherwise you would have to replace this with the header and it's going to be in a query, so I'm going to try to get the value access token. And var out is I'm going to get the string value, which is going to be my out var, my access token. All right, so if I got my access token, uh, I want to go somewhere here. Otherwise, return bad request. I mean, if we validated it, we already sort of know that it's a valid access token, but then we can do something based on uh, claims and we can pass the list of claims to the parameters here. But this is just to sort of make a point that you can uh, uh, do stuff with the access token, okay? So going back to my uh, JWT requirements, I'm gonna go ahead and try to target this uh, validate endpoint. So let's go ahead and first, check if we have a token present. So if HTTP context, uh, request headers, uh, try get value, and we're going to get the oh, authorization header, right? Out var, we will get the not token, but we, it will it will rather be the value of auth header. So the reason it's auth header is because we have bare space uh, access token. So what I will want to do here, if I want to extract the access token, uh, I will need to grab my auth header, and it will be I'll have to cast it to string first because it is a, a primitive string value. I'm not, I'm not sure what that's about, but. I cast it to string and it will be bare space token. So I will just split it at the space part and I'll grab the last part of it. Or I can just say one. Okay. So this will be the access token. And now what I want to do is I want to pass it to the HTTP client and go to that, uh, uh, what's it called, to this endpoint to validate it. 
and I'll pass it in the query. So in my client home, because I already have this uh, request that I'm making here to the index page of the secret page, what, what I'm going to do rather here is do auth and uh, I'll say validate here and access token. I will supply a. Wait, I think I should drop this down so it's easier to see. Uh, I'll have to make this async to use await and pass the access token here. Okay, so we get the access token from the auth header. We put it in the query because our server already has the mechanism for extracting it from the query and uh, then we will just grab the response in this uh, case it will just be a response am i forgetting anything else oh okay and response right so if response status code equals status code dot okay so if everything's okay we want to grab requirements and we want to say or rather sorry context and we want to say that it has succeeded the requirement okay this shouldn't be too hard to grasp hopefully uh, let's go ahead and register our handlers now uh, so in the startup of the api what i want to do is in add requirements i remove the semicolon let's provide a new jwt requirement and make this a i guess we messed up the namespaces here in the api so let's remove the JWT requirements and make auth requirements and we'll change the namespace here as well. So auth requirements and then in the startup we'll use this and actually I'll go back to this class and I'll put a breakpoint here just so we can see what's happening. Uh, okay, so we add the requirement here and now we need to register the handler as well. So services, add uh, scope. Uh, let's say HTTP or I authorization handler and the JWT requirement handler. Okay, so this will now be available to the pipeline and this requirement will be the default for the authorization. So now if we go to the secret controller for the API, this authorized attribute will essentially always go through this JWT requirement handler and this is how it's going to validate it with the server okay so hoping I don't miss anything if something we can always fix these errors uh, API response um, gonna pass it in the header as well yeah okay stop here let's see what happens and auth controller I have a breakpoint here as well okay so we have our three browsers. If we go to slash uh, secret slash secret, we're gonna see we're gonna instantly hit this authorization attribute, and it's gonna give us basically nothing. So no authentication scheme was specified, and there was no default. Blah blah blah. Not to worry. Uh, what I want to go through now is the home slash secret. So I basically I want to try to access that. Um, secret resource on my API. So you can see that the auth header is bear token and then we extract the token and now we're going to make a request to the server to validate our token and hopefully I haven't forgotten to put a breakpoint here. No I haven't. So here we have been able to extract the access token that we have passed and it has authorized it as well so uh, if we're authorized with our server and we can perform any other checks that we want to do here or if we because uh, you know that the way I showed you how to decode the payload we can decode the payload here and do any checks that we want here as well all right and again the status code is okay because everything is okay that's what it's responded with we're going to validate the requirement and we're going to be able to access the secret message in the secret controller of the API uh, project and the what's called the, the API responds with OK as well and the server responds with OK as well. So at this point, uh, let me close everything and uh, maybe drag a little bit more attention to the project window. 
Uh, at this point, we have a client that is requesting an access token from the server. It's going to make a call to some kind of authorized uh, endpoint on our API, and our API validates the token with the server. Now, I haven't implemented the validation mechanism on the server for the token part, but it's kind of there uh, to be built out. And again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I don't want to go too deeply into show you how to do this because chances are you are not going to you're not going to do it because better tools already exist. And I'm just going to show you how to use the tools rather than implementing this yourself. You can go and try and implement this on in your own time, and I think it will give you a little bit more understanding. But at this point, as long as you're okay with understanding that the client is sending the token to the API, and then the API has some kind of mechanism to know that this server is essentially where it needs to validate the token, and then the server is just going to do something to validate the token. And then the API is going to go, all right, okay, here is your stuff that you requested. And the client ends up with the stuff. All right, this will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, see you in my other episodes.